Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this day's message is from the Gospel lesson from Luke, the 8th chapter. Jesus sent the demons into the pigs, and the pigs rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. And then Jesus sent the man away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. This is our text. So what bedevils you? Perhaps it's a festering illness that just bedevils you because you're not confident that you'll ever get over this painful, life-threatening, or life-inhibiting illness. What bedevils you? Is it the loss of a loved one, either by death or divorce or empty nest syndrome? What bedevils you? Is it the loss of a job? Is it the loss of a pastor? Is it because your husband took a call to Wisconsin and now you're wondering what in the world did he do that for? What bedevils you? Jesus turns to this man who had many devils bedeviling him. And by his authority, sends them into pigs. And the pigs rush down into the lake. And in so doing, saves the man's bacon. Today he pours water over the head of Carol. And we all remember our baptism in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And by those waters he quenches the fires of hell. And he waters the deserts of our existence to turn them into pleasant pastures and green meadows. In the authority of Christ, the demons are driven out, and we are given victory and pure life once again. So what bedevils you? Oli and Lena are bedeviled by going through a divorce, and it's no joke. Oli was unfaithful to Lena, and not seeing the error of his ways, he decided to go down to his own graves, his own catacombs where it was dark. And there amongst friends who would convince him that he had done nothing wrong. There in the darkness where he couldn't see the shadow of his own guilt in the mirror. He felt he was free. <coughs> Lena, on the other hand, is equally occupied with the cemetery. But on the other side of the equation, she is obsessed with being sinned against. And she will gladly tell of holy sin to all who will listen. And she goes down to the cemetery to dig up the rotting corpses of past arguments and failures. So they are heir to everybody. Which of them is truly free? One is in denial, and the other is hypocrite. Which is free? Neither one. They may feel like they're declaring their freedom. They may feel like they're releasing their bonds and their shackles, but they've merely found themselves in another desert, just like this guy, this poor demon-possessed guy in our gospel lesson. In one sense, he was free. What wouldn't we give with this kind of freedom? Look at it. Just consider this for a moment. Consider the freedom this guy has. He owes no income tax. Christian Dior versus Pierre Cardin, not a problem for him. He chooses au natural. You're a tough crowd of <laughs> His house, there is nobody on the block that has a house that's better than his. There's nothing to compare it to. In one sense, he's totally free. But on the other sense, he's completely chained and shackled nevertheless. Chained and shackled by his demons, out of his mind, tormented day and night. What bedevils you? Barney's been raised in a Christian home all of his life, and it's getting a little boring for him. And some kids at his school were saying, well, we've got a gang. It's not a real gang. Come, come with us. Do this or that, and you're part of our gang. 
It's exciting. It's something different. It's freedom from his family. So mom and dad can't tell him what to do anymore. And now he's free. And finding himself chained and shackled in a deserted existence within a gang. Resorted to thuggery. Rather than filling himself with garbage and with the pig's flesh and tainted stews that we heard about in the Old Testament lesson, he fills himself with drugs and alcohol. Oh, he's free, all right. Free from mom and dad. But he's condemned himself to live a life of misery within the confines and the shackles of a new game. What the devil's you? Betty's tired of her church. All those rules and regulations, those Ten Commandments, get kind of boring after a while. All the forms of worship and the prayers and the set teachings within the scriptures, too limiting for her. So she seeks out the religions of the world. Crystals and incense and other spiritual practices. She's free. She's told the organized church to take it and leave it. And she'll find her own way. Spiritual but not religious. The fastest growing category of religion in America. She's free in one sense, but wandering in the desert for the rest of her life. She'll go on searching. Searching for the next fix. Searching for the next spiritual experience to fill the empty vacuum that is inside her. What bedevils you? Go on and on and on. But there's one solution to Oli and Lena and Barney and Betty. And we spelled it out for you by building a mountain. In building the mountain, we accidentally covered up part of our sign that's usually on the balcony. It used to say, Welcome home. Now it just spells out the solution to Barney and Betty and Oli and Lena. It says, come home. Come home. And that's what Jesus does to this demon-possessed man. He has no house. He has no friends. He's dwelling among the dead. And so Jesus tells him to go home. Go home to where you find true love. Return to your home. And declare how much God has done for you. Despite all of this man's raving and tormenting and wanderings and foolish behavior and breaking of shackles and all the other stuff, he still has a home. Despite of all of our sinfulness against God, whether it be gangs or spiritual wandering or divorce or heckling or gossip or whatever it is, we have a home. To those who don't even know Jesus yet, they have a home. To those who have known Jesus and wandered away, they have a home yet. Go home, Jesus says. Go home. Home to where you find your love in your Father's house. I will free you of your demons and give you a life everlasting. As I wrap up my ministry here, start compiling statistics if you want. And over the course of the last 16 years, I've performed at least 100 exorcisms, maybe going on 200. I'm not sure. I haven't kept track. But we have, we have performed well over 100 exorcisms. And we did one just, just, just a little while ago about 40 minutes ago. And you all participated. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. That part of the baptismal rite is called the exorcism. In your heart there is a throne. And by birth, by nature, we are sinful and unclean and under the power of the devil on that throne until Christ claims us as his own. So three times 
we renounce the devil, his works, and his ways. And three times we put the real God on that throne. I believe in God the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Christian Church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And that God goes surely on our throne. The devil has been cast out. You have been marked with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you are His. Come heck or high water. You are His. Neither life nor death nor anything else in all creation can separate you from that victory. You are His. You are baptized for life everlasting. What a gift God has given us in making us heirs through our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan, hear this proclamation. I am baptized into Christ. Drop your ugly accusation. I am not so soon enticed. Now that to the font I've traveled, all your might has come unraveled. I love that rhyme. And against your tyranny, God, my Lord, unites with me. So once more I ask you, what's shaking your bacon? What bedevils you? How is the devil trying to wedge that wedge between you and your loved ones, between you and your home, you and your home church, you and your Lord? Whatever it is, Tell the devil to take a hike and go jump in the lake. Thanks to Jesus, he knows the way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we are our victors. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.